big highlights right here on India Today. Thanks as always for tuning in. This is Five Live. I'm Shiv. These are the headlines. Supreme Court pulls up State Bank of India for not disclosing bond numbers which can link donations to particular parties. Issues noticed the SPI on a plea seeking the release of unique ID number for each bond. Ask for all available details next hearing on Monday. Stage set for 2024 battle election date announcement at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Election Commission to announce dates for Lok Sabha and Assembly elections in a few states. First government response on the electoral bonds data. Finance Minister Nirmala responds. Data says, says narrative built on assumptions asks if the earlier system was 100% perfect. The government has given and the state bank has done its job as per the orders given by the state, uh, Supreme Court. Kya isse pehle jo system tha, wo 100% perfect tha kya? Prime Minister Modi's scathing attack on the DMK and the Congress says will crush arrogance of the Tamil Nadu Sarkar during his rally in Kanyakumari, asserts people of Tamil Nadu will reject Bharat Todo parties. BJP ka pradarshan is bar, DMK aur Congress ke Indi Alliance ka Karnataka BJP strongman and former Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa booked under POXO for allegedly assaulting a 17-year-old woman. Police sources say victim was assaulted in February. Karnataka Mantri initiates probe. Yadurappa's office releases a list of many such past complaints by this individual. The breathless build-up to State of War 2024 is finally rolling. 22 hours from now, at 3 p.m. tomorrow, viewer, the Election Commission will be holding its press conference to lay before the country the dates for elections 2024. The dates are going to be announced as part of that traditional annual press conference. There had been a slight delay in this announcement owing to the sudden resignation of Election Commissioner Arun Goel. The reappointment of two new election commissioners needed to be done before the dates could be announced. Dates for some assembly elections will also be out in addition to the Lok Sabha election. The poll dates announcement comes two days after two new election commissioners were appointed. Election commissioners Gyanesh Kumar and Sukhbir Sandhu took charge today after being selected by a Prime Minister-led panel yesterday and being approved by the President. So now the decks are cleared for the Election Commission to hold that long-anticipated press conference at the end of which the dates for the Lok Sabha and a couple of Assembly elections 2024 will be announced. It's a celebration of democracy 2024. Uh, these elections are uh, uh, ensuing. It is... Uh, a time for people of India to look at the last 10 years of what Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has delivered, uh, how deeply he has transformed our country, how he has created a launch pad for India to become a developed nation, and to compare it with the 10 years of the Congress UPA uh, in the center when the people gave them an opportunity, and to compare it with the, the left government in Kerala, which is busy running to the Supreme Court uh, asking to be bailed out. So. People of India will vote, people of Tirunavaram will vote, people of Kerala will vote. If I remember right, in 2014 election, the schedule was announced on March 5. In 2019 election, it was announced on March 10. And this time they're announcing it on March 16. So I welcome it. Why should UP have seven phases, West Bengal have seven phases? Mm. Tamil Nadu and Puducherry together have 40 seats. It's done on one day. West Bengal is 42 seats, so why can't it be done in one day? Look at the other example. Bihar is 29 seats. Why should they have five phases in Bengal? I think uh, say uh, a state which has 
about 30 to 40 constituencies or under can be done on one day. A state like UP, which has got 80 seats, can be done in two days. There's no reason at all for more than two phases in any state. And remember, India, today's number one polit political and election team has been in full poll mode for the last many months already. Even though we've been waiting for the election commission to finally announce those dates tomorrow, we don't have to change anything. All of our reporters across the country have already been in election mode for a long time now. So let's go straight to them and find out what's going on. Aishwarya Paliwal from Delhi, Mustafa from Mumbai, Shilpa Nair in Chennai, Sagar Raj in Bengaluru, Abhishek Mishra in Lucknow. Shilpa, I'll start with you. The Prime Minister is in your neck of the woods right now for the nth time just this year. Clearly, the South is the flavour of the season as far as the BJP and the Modi machine is concerned. He's just given a big speech in Kanyakumari as well. So it's game on for the South now. Tomorrow, the dates will be announced. Well, that's right, Shiv. In fact, uh, the Election Commission of India is all set to, uh, you know, announce the dates for the general elections. Uh, the uh, election schedule will be out tomorrow at 3 p.m. But for Prime Minister Modi, the campaign had started much in advance. And, uh, you know, as we speak, he uh, finished uh, his public meeting in Kanyakumari. Uh, he just finished in Patanam. That is what I believe, uh, which is yeah. in Kerala. And uh, he, of course, then goes on to the next southern state. So uh, his southern sojourn, uh, that's what we are calling it, uh, that has, of course, started it. And for the next next couple of days, the entire focus of the BJP of Prime Minister Modi will be on the southern states because remember the BJP has set a very high target for themselves that is 370 par uh, and 400 for the uh, NDA. Uh, that is a very highly ambitious target and yes. for them to crack that particular target uh, southern seats will play a crucial role and that is the reason why the Prime Minister uh, is wasting no time and leaving no stone unturned going to one state after the other in the southern part of the country, one con after the other. Today, of course, in Kanyakumari, he lashed out at the DMK and the Congress uh, and the India Alliance saying that, you know, once uh, these elections are over, seeing the BJP's performance, uh, the, uh, the arrogance of the BJP, uh, arrogance of the uh, DMK and Congress will be crushed. That is mm. what the Prime Minister uh, has said. And apart from that, he, you know, highlighted various, uh, uh, various developmental projects, yeah, welfare yeah. schemes that the Union BJP government has implemented and taking on the DMK on several uh, political issues as well. And uh, there is, of course, another Kwaimbatu roadshow that has been planned, uh, which uh, the local administration has denied permission for. Uh, again, the Prime Minister will be going to the Salem. So uh, the BJP at this point in time, especially with res respect to Tamil Nadu, they are focusing on the western region yes. and the southern parts of Tamil Nadu, where they believe they have high chances of, uh, you know, improving their performance. Okay, very, very interesting. And, you know, the, the, the Prime Minister, the BJP, really leaving no stone unturned. Aishwarya, who's been tracking things in the north, uh, and uh, also covers the election commission for us. The big day tomorrow finally arrives, Aishwarya. Finally, that suspense at least ends. Uh, you know, 2019 was a, was a sort of mammoth seven-phase, if I'm not mistaken, election across the country. What's it looking like right now? Are you picking up any buzz over what they're going to announce tomorrow? Well, let me tell you three things very quickly, Shiv. First is that from seven to eight, that's the number of phases in which the elections will be held. The second important thing is that artificial intelligence will be used this time by the election commission to make sure that they keep a hawk's eye on all the phases and on all the states. They'll also make sure that they understand and they also keep an eye on the social media platforms being used by political parties and by candidates. And the third important thing is that 10% of total force which hmm. is being used Shiv will be sent to the state of West Bengal 150 companies will be sent because election commission believes that West Bengal at the moment is a tinder box and that's the uh, that's the state that actually needs a lot of attention very Shiv. interesting and remember Aishwarya will be fronting coverage of that press conference for us from the election commission tomorrow Abhishek quickly coming to you now Uttar Pradesh uh, you know is the battle of all battles as it were uh, you know the BJP looking very confident there we've seen a lot of heat and dust, uh, you know, thanks to the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra also moving through Uttar Pradesh. How are things looking right now? Is the double engine Sarkar of, uh, you know, the, uh, of Modi and Yogi in UP confident of bettering its last time's tally? How is UP looking right now with the dates to be announced tomorrow? 
Well, Shiv, as, as of now, it is very clear that the BJP is once again is very keen on repeating uh, its three-peat in the terms of numbers mm. they got in the past uh, two general elections. 2014, 73 is what they got. 2019, 64, and later on they won the by-elections as well. But to this time, they're optimistic that, you know, uh, the target is 80. But with the kind of, you know, the sentiments are on the ground and the combination which are as of now looks favoring to the yes. BJP because India Alliance indeed is uh, standing against along with Samajwadi Party and Akhilesh and Congress. But so far, the seat sharing formula is not yet revealed. We're also witnessing how Mayavati standing along, uh, you know, all on her, on her own will certainly all also benefit the BJP and in fact BJP was already in a campaigning hmm. mode. We have seen Prime Minister Modi already beginning the campaigning from Varanasi. He has gone to Azamgarh and we are also expecting a very massive campaign, not just physically but you know technology, use of AI uh, and also the digital transformation which has been done, making it a 2.0 in terms of the campaign yes. which the BJP is all set. But we, have, we will not have to forget that Western Uttar Pradesh, that has also been managed with RLD on board and Eastern part where Prime Minister himself is the poster boy. So that is something which the BJP is very optimistic that the major chunk, the major share will again come from the Uttar Pradesh. And that is why this election will once again be very significant for the BJP to get that number, which they are targeting 370 plus and 400, which is a very big number to achieve as of now. And remember, yes. if the mood of the nation uh, survey uh, is any suggestion whatsoever, then Uttar Pradesh is more than just in the bag as far as the BJP is concerned. Coming to you, Sagai, you know, another state that is proving to be uh, and has always proven to be very intriguing and interesting. Uh, you know, lots of heat in Karnataka over the, 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 the tickets that have been handed out by both the Congress and the BJP. Uh, you know, the BJP suffered a humiliating defeat in the Assembly elections last year. How are they looking for the Lok Sabha? You know, the BJP constantly says that the vote is very different between state and centre, between the Vidhan Sabha and the, and the, and the Lok Sabha. What's it looking like right now? The BJP did, you know, had a healthy haul in Karnataka the last time in 2019. But, you know, with the, the, the Siddharamaya, DK, Shivakumar combination, the, you know, the dynamics of politics in Karnataka post-2023, how is it looking, Sagai? Now, as the history shows that Karnataka has always voted differently, whether it comes to state elections or a central election. Mm. And even this time, probably the BJP are backing on Modi wave as well as the history. On the other side, if you notice, the Congress are quite confident that uh, they might get more numbers of seats this time, unlike in 2019. They especially, they are uh, uh, backing the guarantees. The, they are confident that the guarantees work uh, miracles for them and probably they will get more numbers of seats in the state of Karnataka. Yeah. So wherever they are going for campaigning, they are trying to point out the guarantees, especially the achievement of Karnataka Congress government in implementing these guarantees. But if you see technically, an opposition party in the state of Karnataka, I mean to say central, central, uh, in centrally, Congress is in the opposition, pa, pa, in the opposition, and mm. they should have probably gone ahead and announced the candidates much before then what uh, the Congress uh, should have done, because only some one candidates has been announced in a ruling party in the state probably they are taking a risk when it comes to a mission like bjp war 365 days in election mode right so if right. you have to counter a party like bjp that in a ruling party like karna ruling government in karnataka they should have announced the candidates much before earlier and they should have allowed them to work and also back their uh, uh, should have got the backing of their government to go ahead and explain their schemes and guarantees which has been uh, implemented by Karnataka government. Probably in, in that way, Congress has failed. Probably that might be, Interesting. that might yeah. favor the BJP in the days to come along with Modi wave. Okay, so is there going to be a Modi wave? Is it going to have an effect in the south? Remember, Karnataka has been an outlier for the BJP because unlike all the other states, the, Karna the, the BJP has managed to rule Karnataka several different times. It has a footprint in Karnataka, but the other states in the south have continued to hold out, uh, as it were, against the BJP, especially Kerala and Tamil Nadu and that's where the Prime Minister is spending most of his time. And finally Mustafa Sheikh, my friend and colleague from Mumbai. Uh, Mustafa, if there's one state which has 
not stopped being in a state of war since the last Lok Sabha election. It is our very own Maharashtra. It, it has been in a constant state of turbulence. You know, whether it is the Shinde rebellion, whether it is the splitting up of the uh, Udhav Sena, whether it is the Ajit Pawar controversy, uh, there has been no rest for you and your team in Mumbai. So when dates are announced tomorrow, it's just back to work. Yes, of course, Shiv, as you rightly said, five years of political mode that has been the situation in Maharashtra. And I still feel that Maharashtra is going to be one of the most interesting state yeah. elections in the com upcoming Lok Sabha. Which way will Maharashtra go, whether it will be the Karnataka way or the Gujarat way? That is one thing which has to be decided. There were three political parties in 2019. Now there are six political parties split into regional parties which has taken place. Rahul Gandhi is in Maharashtra currently. He'll be uh, ending his Nyaya Yatra in Mumbai. Where to whether that will have an impact for the India Alliance, for the Mahavikas Agadi, as Sagai was pointing out, even in Maharashtra, seat sharing, be it for MBA or the Mahayuti, it seems to be a problematic situation. It has not been announced for most of the seats in the coming days. What will be the issues? Because the opposition is thinking, especially Rahul Gandhi is taking a press conference just in a while, and he thinks that the electoral bond issue is the fresh MO which the opposition has got just before mm. election, whether they'll be able to utilize yeah. it. There are many issues, be it national or local. So which way Maharashtra goes and what happens on the different seats and the different parties which are fighting is something we have to wait, wait and look forward to. Back this to is the true vibrance of a democracy where it's game on as far as all parties are concerned. The alliance, the India alliance, which had some troubles, uh, you know, appears to have found some of its mojo right before the dates are going to be announced. And one uh, assumes now that all suspense over ticket distribution will finally come to an end. Those lists are going to come thick and fast, hopefully, in the next few days. Aishwarya, Shilpa, Mustafa, uh, Abhishek and Sagai, thanks very much for joining me. All corners of the country, we've got it covered. Now, hours before the Election Commission announces those dates for elections 2024, the Prime Minister, like you just heard Shilpa say, is on Mission South for the fifth time this year. On Friday, he started his Deep South push from Kanyakumari. And then he was in Padanam Titta in Kerala before he ends his day in a short while in Telangana, attacking the opposition, wooing youth and women and pushing development. The day one, day one of the Prime Minister's five states in five days campaign was nothing short of a big bugle call for 2024. Take a look. The first destination for the mega South India outreach by BJP and the Prime Minister was the southernmost tip of the country in Kanyakumari. The Prime Minister started his blitzkrieg campaign in five South states in five days by opening an attack on the ruling party DMK and its alliance with the India bloc. यहाँ की डीएम के कांग्रेस गठबंधन कन्याकुमारी के लोगों को सजा देने का कोई मौका नहीं छोड़ती कन्याकुमारी और तिरुवनंतपुरम फोरलेन रोड भी यहाँ की सरकार बनने नहीं दे रही थी हमें इसके लिए अतिरिक्त फंड देना पड़ा तब ये काम शुरू हो पाया फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सिंस द ए आई ए डी एम के लेफ्ट दी एन डी ए लास्ट ईयर ओवर डिस अग्रीमेंट्स विद बीजेपी स्टेट चीफ के अन्ना मलाय द लोटस इज विदाउट एन एलाय इन तमिलनाडु Prime Minister Modi added more ammunition to his opening attack and announced that the BJP will crush the arrogance of DMK and Congress in Tamil Nadu. तमिलनाडु में बीजेपी का प्रदर्शन इस बार डीएम के और कांग्रेस के इंडी एलायंस का सारा घमंड तोड़ करके रख देगा नेक्स्ट ही वॉज इन केरला इन पटनम थिट्टा nearly 200 kilometers from his first rally in Kanyakumari hoping to woo nearly 3 lakh youth voters of the state in favor of the lotus the prime minister harped on the development agenda and the need to get on the national bandwagon to take advantage of it fully 
बीजेपी के उम्मीदवार भाई अनिल के एंटनी आपकी सेवा के जज्बे से भरे हुए हैं ऐसी ही फ्रेशनेस की केरला की पॉलिटिक्स को जरूरत है इसलिए अब केरला के लोग भी कह रहे हैं अब की बार 400 पार Next the prime minister will continue his tireless campaign tour by visiting Telangana. He has a packed schedule traversing across five states for the next 4 days as well. Bureau report India today. And we've got breaking news coming in now from the prime minister's visit to the southern part of the country the stalin versus modi government face off has just escalated after the tamil nadu government's refusal to grant permission for prime minister modi's coimbatore road show tomorrow the bjp has now moved the madras high court against the stalin government in chennai modi and his entourage was to what to hold a road show in coimbatore uh, tomorrow as part of the prime minister's Five day, five city visit in the south, but permission had been declined by the Stalin government. The BJP has now moved the Madras High Court against this denial of permission. We'll update you on what happens on that front. But on the other side is this very short break. It's the electoral bonds issue, the biggest headline of the day. Hours after electoral bonds data was made public by the Election Commission, the first and only government response on the entire issue was at the India Today conclave by none less than the Finance Minister. That's next. सिंह रावत बसवराज बोमई थ्री फॉर्मर चीफ मिनिस्टर्स फ्रॉम द प्लेन्स ऑफ हरियाणा हिल्स ऑफ उत्तराखंड टू कर्नाटका डाउन साउथ एटलीस्ट फाइव यूनियन मिनिस्टर्स द भारतीय जनता पार्टी हैज अनवेल्ड इट सेकेंड रोस्टर ऑफ कैंडिडेट्स फॉर द लोकसभा पोल्स द रोस्टर कंप्राइजेस सेवेंटी टू नेम्स The party's youth wing chief Tejasvi Surya nominated to contest from Bangalore South. In total, 20 candidates are named from Karnataka, six from Telangana, 20 candidates hail from the western state of Maharashtra, five from Madhya Pradesh, seven from Gujarat, two from Delhi, two from Himachal Pradesh, and two from Uttarakhand. Round off the count. With the release of the second list the BJP has now revealed 267 names for the upcoming general elections Bureau report India today Har garib mahila ko seedhe bank account mein Hindustan ki sarkar saal ke 1 lakh rupaye de The Congress rounds off its series of Nyay guarantees with its biggest election pledge. The principal opposition party has made five promises to women. Mahalakshmi scheme that will transfer 1 lakh rupees a year to one woman per poorest of poor families. 50% quota for women in central government recruitments. doubling of central government's contribution to wages of asha anganwadi and midday meal workers 
वन अधिकार मैत्री और काउंसिलर इन एवरी पंचायत टू स्प्रेड अवेयरनेस अमंग वीमेन अबाउट द स्कीम्स एंड राइट्स अवेलेबल टू देम एंड एनश्योर देर इज एट लीस्ट वन हॉस्टल फॉर वर्किंग वीमेन इन एवरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट दिस विल बी नेम्ड आफ्टर नाइनटीन सेंचुरी सोशल रिफॉर्मर एंड एजुकेशनलिस्ट सावित्री भाई फूले हमारी सरकार आएगी इंडिया की सरकार आएगी With women along with the youth emerging as decisive factors in elections every party is trying to meet their aspirations Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his Independence Day speech last year had launched the Lakhpati Didi scheme that aims to make women from villages Lakhpatis The initiative aims to train women in self-help groups so that they can start micro enterprises The drive's objective is to help rural women earn income of at least 1 lakh rupees per annum per household. Modi's guarantees versus Congress nyay guarantees. Guarantee has become the buzzword for Mission 2024. Your report India today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com. के मुख्यमंत्री अपने भ्रष्टाचार के उजागर होने से अपना आपा खो बैठे हैं उनको मालूम नहीं है कि सारे लोग आ चुके हैं आज भारत में ही रह रहे हैं सिर्फ इनको अधिकार नहीं मिला है वो अधिकार देने की बात है 2014 तक जो आ गए इनको नागरिकता देनी है और इतनी ही चिंता है तो वो क्यों बांग्लादेशी घुसपेटियों की बात नहीं करते हैं रोहिंग्या का विरोध क्यों नहीं करते हैं क्योंकि वो वोट बैंक की पॉलिटिक्स कर रहे हैं और बांग्लादेशी नौकरी का अधिकार नहीं मार रहे हैं क्या रोहिंग्याज नहीं मार रहे हैं इनके लिए तो आप कभी नहीं बोले भाई सिर्फ जो हिंदू शरणार्थी आए हैं जो बौद्ध शरणार्थी आए जो जैन पारसी और क्रिश्चियन शरणार्थी इसी का विरोध कर रहे हैं प्रो एंड अन मे बी बींग अकांक्षा रंजन कपूर I want to be grateful and say, okay, you mean as a person, as an actor, what do you mean? Uh, as a person, as an actor, both. I think as a person, I'm grateful. Um, I don't see a con. I feel I'm a misunderstood person because I feel I'm so boisterous and out there and talkative. I'm mis. I've been misunderstood a lot. I think that's a con of being me. A pro of being me is I think I've got the best support support system in the world, friends and family. Like I don't think. Like if there was a competition, I'd win. <laughs> the best support system. Uh, a pro as an actor, I feel I've got to work with very credible filmmakers. You know, with Basan sir and everybody. Like very early on. The con of being me as an actor, I think again the misconception that I've been in that elite one percent of actors who've had it easy. I know them. I've hung out with them. I'm not one of them. So there's that misconception. So sometimes it upsets me when they're like, "Oh, who oh, another nepo who had it so easy?" I said, "Bro, that ain't my journey. Like, that's not me. I, like, you know." So I want to like sit people down and be like, "Hey, let's have a conversation. Let me tell you, you know." But again, I don't want to be that person who cries and whines. But like, yeah, it upsets when I'm like, "You don't know the half of my journey." When you uh, got this role, who was the first person you contacted? <laughs> my mom. Uh, so I didn't tell anybody. I I found out in the evening. So I went to sleep on that information because I was like, it's too good to be true. So it's not happening. Let 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 me find out. There's going to be some but, and I've gone to sleep. As when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to get some messaging. Unfortunately, because I'm so I was so used to that at that time. And I woke up and I'm like, okay, this is happening. This is real. And I go to my mom's room, and I was like, mom, I need to tell you something, but please don't tell anyone because I was so superstitious. Okay, you know, someone will jinx it. So I said, don't tell anyone. 
So she's got scared. She said, "Bitak, don't scare me. What happened?" And I'm like, "I got my first role." And she has cried and fallen like just on the bed, and she's just howling. And I was like, "I know it's happened. Finally, it's happened. Best day ever." <laughs> You're also become a masi now to Raha. <laughs> how she? How is she as a baby? I mean, just like if you could share something with our viewers. I was. I don't want to share about her because I'm not her parent, but she's my little laddu, and I'm obsessed with her. Everyone knows it. And here's that latest update coming in from Tamil Nadu where the prime minister was to hold a road show in Coimbatore blocked by the Stalin government the BJP moved the Madras high court and now the high court has instructed the Tamil Nadu government to grant permission for the road show permission after the BJP moved the high court against the Tamil Nadu government this road show will be taking place Uh, for a distance of about 3.6 kilometers tomorrow in Coimbatore the Madras High Court has directed the police now to grant permission for the prime minister's road show in the city of Coimbatore that's the latest we're getting from there hours after electoral bonds data was made public under instructions from the supreme court by the election commission the first and only government response so far on this controversial burning issue has come from finance minister nirmala sitaraman at the india today conclave 2024 that kicked off today she dismissed the prevailing narrative on bonds as being founded on assumptions questioning the perfection of the previous funding system here's a listen here's what she said The release of electoral bond donors and receivers names by the election commission on the orders of the supreme court has opened up pandora's list ahead of lok sabha elections the data reveals the bjp has received 47% of the total bonds since 2019 at 6061 crore rupees the trinamool congress got 12.6% amounting to 1610 crore rupees followed by the indian national congress with 11% adding to 1422 crore rupees the brs received 1215 crores and biju janata dal 776 crore rupees electoral bonds monies are going into the accounts from account to finance minister nirmala sitaraman speaking at the india today conclave defended the controversial electoral bonds stressing their role in weeding out black money from party funding it's not a perfect system but you moved from almost a wild uh, law unto one self kind of a situation where everybody did what they wanted so we moved from that to the system this is certainly not perfect but one bit better The Congress launched blistering attacks on the BJP, accusing them of engaging in extortion and corruption through the electoral bond system. PM should be held accountable because he is the he is the main man, and Prime Minister himself claims always a Modi ki sarkar, a Modi ki party. a modi ki guarantee so everything is in his name only he never said even bjp the data published by the ec revealed future gaming and hotel services private limited run by santiago martin known as the lottery king was the top donor the company donated 1368 crore rupees mega engineering and infrastructures limited came second at 966 crore rupees Quick Supply Chain Private Limited, Vedanta and Haldia Energy were among the top 5. 
16,518 crore rupees were donated to political parties between April 1, 2019 and February 15, 2024 through electoral bonds. Meanwhile, Supreme Court reprimanded the SBI for not disclosing the unique ID numbers assigned to each electoral bond. The court has issued a notice to the bank and the next hearing is scheduled on Monday in the matter. The matching of bond numbers is key to identifying who donated how much amount to which party. The SBI had earlier claimed in court that matching the data sets is a time-consuming process. Bureau Report, India Today. And here's what Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said today, the first government response on the election, electoral bonds issue. Recently, we got to know the identity of the donors in the electoral bonds. And as I was scrutinizing the list, there are a couple of questions that I'm sure are in the minds of everyone here. A, the fact that the BJP gets the large majority of the funding, which can be partly explained by the fact that you're the party in power and everybody wants to be with whoever they think can win. But there are two other questions. One, that the country's major corporate groups, and I don't want to name any one or two, but the big funders who you'd imagine are the ones who are spending their money because it's now through white channels, are not on that list. They're not amongst the major donors, and I'm wondering, okay, if those guys are funding, how is that money coming, and how are they funding, and why is it not through white channels? The second question, Madam Finance Minister, is this, that out of the 30 top funders, 14 corporates had some kind of investigative agency chasing them for some case, which would lead everyone sitting here to wonder whether this is some kind of a buy yourself some protection. If these agencies are chasing you, fund through the electoral bond route in the hope that you can buy yourself some protection. Now, the Modi government's promise was, we will not let this happen. No way, no crony capitalism. And yet the data seems to be telling a story which leads to many questions, Madam Finance Minister. I think you've based yourself on huge assumptions that the money is given after the ED raid happened. For all you know, the money was given earlier. And in spite of that, we went knocking at their doors. Am I making sense? No? <laughs> what if the companies gave the money, and after that we still went and knocked at their doors through ED? Is that a probability or not? That's an assumption which Rahul has made, that ED went and knocked at their doors, they wanted to save themselves, and therefore they came up with the funds. One. Second assumption in that itself is... Are you sure that they've given it to BJP? They probably gave it to the regional parties. What makes you assume so many things and build a narrative? The government has given and the state bank has done its job as per the orders given by the state, uh, Supreme Court. Now you do any hair splitting on it, but do it without assumptions of this nature. ED, and therefore they gave you but the rest of them didn't, uh, the rest of them have given God knows to who, which AD sent, was sent to them, and they have also given it. I think, you know, smart, hard-working research will do good rather than lazy journalism. And here's a voice from the opposition side on being asked at the India Today conclave about Finance Minister Nirmala's statement on electoral bonds, former Finance Minister and Congress stalwart P. Chidambaram lashed out at the Modi government and stated that electoral bonds were introduced. It was clear that it was a legalized bribery system. Here's what Chidambaram said. Electoral bonds. Yes. Uh, 14 of the top 30 companies who've given donations through electoral bonds are companies that at some stage or the other in recent times have been raided or investigated by the enforcement agencies. Uh, when we asked this question to Nirmala Sitaraman, she said these are your assumptions that there is a protection being offered and, and that's how uh, any connection is being built between raids and, and donations given. What's your view? Since you are many believe the architect of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, 
who was the who was the finance minister and who was the prime minister and which was the law or who was the government in 2002 one second when did the act receive the assent of the president in 2003 fatf asked the government the act has been passed president has assented why are you not implementing that if you don't implement that we will have to ask you to withdraw from fatf we came into office in 2004 the tremendous pressure from fatf you have passed a law you have to implement it otherwise you will have to withdraw from fatf so in 2005 i made two significant amendments to the act and implemented it but nobody thought not you not i not any lawyer that you can weaponize a law you weaponize a law use it to tame or destroy political opponents electoral bonds